What's poppin' everybody? I'm Jeff Wall. I'm here with Peggy Kibaya here. Uh, we're talking about this week in MMA. So obviously there was a big, big upset uh, in the middle of the week with one. We didn't get a chance to recap it prior, so we're gonna do that now. But first, before we do that, we're gonna talk about this past Bellator card. Uh, Peggy, I mean, we saw the rematch of Ryan Bader versus Leota Machida. And I think we're all hyped about this uh, light heavyweight tournament. And on paper, we were saying that you know, their light heavyweight division almost looks better than the UFC's. But after this fight, at least with these two particular guys, it just looks like the tournament of old men. Like it just, these guys did not look the, themselves. They looked super, they didn't have much energy. They were slow. They were sloppy. And it was generally not like a super impressive fight. It was kind of a typical Ryan Bader fight, but just with less less things that make me think that he's actually going to come in here and pretty much beat anybody. I don't know. What did you think? I mean, as much as we both hate, not that we hate the UFC, but the way their business is ran, how they treat fighters, I think the promotion actually matters a lot more than people think, right? So I think fans see the promotion and attach um, the quality of fighters to it. But I think fighters see the promotion and also attach the importance to it, right? Because money isn't everything, right? Because a lot of Bellator guys are making more money than UFC guys and one guys, right? And you'll have fighters like Josh Thompson talking about pay and how like, you know, fighting UFC is largely not worth it unless you're one of the top, top guys. And it makes a whole lot of sense, right? But in terms of the intensity of matchups, Bellator cards, it's more than just a saying. They flop constantly, Jeff. Like you, you, you've seen it. Like there's no, there's like a real lack of energy. I don't know. It's like, you, you, you get what I'm saying? For sure. No, I mean, it used to never in like the Bjorn Rebney days, like way back when Bellator started, Bellator was like, it was almost guaranteed fireworks every single time. And I don't know what happened. Um, I mean, I'll say this. I think Bellator has a lot of good prospects right now. For sure. But that means yeah. I don't think Bellator is going to be the kind of go-to thing right now. Maybe this upcoming week will prove us wrong. Maybe, you know, we see Rumble get in there with, or, or sorry, uh, Nemkov and Phil Davis get in there. We see Nemkov become a real superstar in the sport. And then eventually Yo Yoel Romero and Rumble Johnson will also fight. And we'll see, you know, how much left either of those two have left in the tank. But that's the concerning thing to me, right, is that they're still in this phase of like trying to you know take the other big promotions guys and you know even uh pfl has an event coming up just a little bit later this month with anthony pettis and anthony pettis in the ufc has been absolutely washed like just straight up he's been washed yeah. he's not entertaining really i mean he hits hard still that's the craziest part he still he still hits like a, a ton of bricks and even though he probably might be fighting outside of his weight class he can still be a threat to some of these guys because he is skilled enough but man i i agree with you i think that like the, the name matters that I think, you know, the, the problem is that these other promotions do so many other things. Well, in my opinion, like we love the fact that they pay their fighters, you know, a little like more to what they deserve. You know, it's such a tough business. We love the, um, I would say like the production aspect. I think I would talk about this all the time, like the production aspect on pretty much any promotion, whether you look at KSW, Bellator, um, one was incredible. Like, these guys put so much more effort into these, into this production it gets you more hype, man. Whereas like the UFC, it's just like, you're throwing another body out there. And I think, I personally think eventually, I know you were saying the promotions name means a lot, but I think eventually that's going to run dry. You still need people to care about, in my opinion. I, I yeah, a hundred percent. The name's not going to last forever, but I feel like what's plaguing Bellator cards right now. And especially like, it's almost like you can see the mentality of fighters is that, they're kind of safe, whether they put in performance or not, they're not in constant jeopardy of getting on Dana's bad side and getting cut. And in Bell and it shows, I don't know, it's maybe I'm just maybe, maybe I'm making things up here, but I just don't see the intensity. Is it me falling for the marketing hype of the UFC? Possibly. But a lot of times these cards kind of flop. Even the Patricio Pitbull card. Right, you had a lot of big names, and they went, yeah. The main event was a good fight, right? You had two killers in there, but the card on a whole is like, this ain't it, Chief. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought. I mean, you know, Adam Borks was on this card. He looked really good. But I think as well, um, I think Bellator has had an issue with – accelerating the pro the process when it comes to a prospect like Adam Borix, like um, Aaron Pico, you could argue they probably went a little bit too fast. Obviously he's like the trademark example of maybe why a promotion would say like, Oh my gosh, we don't want to do that because we invested so much in this guy and he just gets 
just he just gets absolutely destroyed in every fight. And maybe that's just Aaron Pico, though. Like, whereas Adam Borks looks like a really good fighter. Like, he needs to be pushed more. AJ McKee versus Patricio. I mean, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, I, I you know, I, I think Patricio is going to run him over. But, man, honestly... I don't care. I'm still hyped. I love the fact that they, you know, they had the, 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 the stare off this, the stare down and everything. I, I love that, man. I love that they they're building up a little bit. And I think AJ McKee though, honestly, man, it's taken him a little bit too long to get to this point. I think he was clearly more skilled than everybody, you know, take a risk here and there. It's the fight game. You kind of got to push a guy and, and keep them going, man. In MMA, I think it's different than boxing where prospects are going to be exposed a little bit more often than they will be in boxing where you can keep them safe because there's just less aspects to the game. And that's not to knock boxing. It's just kind of the way things are. But um, in talking about, you know, guys that you kind of want to turn into the big superstars, the, the guys you want to build your promotion around, Demetrius Johnson, getting absolutely knocked the hell out. It was wild. I think like when you saw the first punch, you're almost like, hasn't like, wait, what? Like Demetrius Johnson just got knocked down. And then you see that knee come in and you're like, oh my God. And then Marais just walks off with the win. And this is the guy that like, you know, he's got to be feeling to himself like, man, this promotion, I, I was their champion. They're bringing this guy in to beat me. And he walks away with the win, beating one of the best fighters of all time. It's just insane. Hate to see it, man. But uh, yeah, D Demetrius, not a super long fight. He looked, he looked decent, looked quick. It didn't look like he lost too much of a step. But boy, man, the, he got caught and it happened, right? And it's not like it's his first loss ever, right? Demetrius has lost before in the past and, and, and he's still gone on to be what many consider the pound for pound king for a long while there. Um, but all in all, it's, a little, it look, it's looking kind of shaky for the UFC. And like for, for us, I would say hardcores or, you know, guys who have been around, who have been really following the sport for a long time. We've, I've known for a long time that talent level wise, there's not a major drop off between these other two, the other two major pr promotions being uh, PF or one FC and Bellator as we know it now. And the, the, the problem again, like we talked about in the previous segment was about the ability, the marketing ability of it is not, it's not there, but in terms of Demetrius, it's, it's kind of sad to see, right. And then those knees from the bottom or sorry, the, the knees from the grounded fighter position, Claims another victim only for that. You know, it, I don't have much to say on it just because it's sad to see. It's one of my legends. I grew up watching this guy thinking he was the best. And he, I still think he's the best. It's just, man. I think for me, man, like I kind of agree with you. I do think that the talent has never been that um, it's never been like that big of a gap. I, mean, wait, I think there's Fedor, more, Fedor never fought in the UFC. And Fedor, I don't care what yeah. you say, is the greatest heavyweight of all time. Doesn't matter, right? He never fought in the UFC. So there's been a lot of great fighters who never fought in the UFC. And Dana was always able to say, well, they're not fighting against the best. And now we're seeing UFC guys go over there. Eddie Alvarez, two and one, he's one and two since being in the one FC, right? I, I did think he got jobbed. I think he got hosed. Like if anything, it was a, maybe a point deduction, but I, I, it, I think it was a bit of a quick hook there. Demetrius Johnson hasn't really looked like the guy we saw in the UFC in, in one, right? He's high. That's, that's, well, that's the thing. His very first fight against a uh, wannabe, he, he had a pretty yeah. tough fight. He, he did, that was an, that was not an easy fight for him. He got roughed up a little bit. Um, and I wonder maybe, you know, with that neither, because it looked like there was just, because Demetrius is just, he's an experienced fighter. You would know, like if he, if he felt like that knee was coming the way he was trying to get up, it's, it's tough. The way you're taught to get up is exactly how we did it, but that's taught in the context of nobody being able to knee you in the head. Right. So the way he was doing it, plus he was rocked, like, man, like, I think it, that changes the game a lot. It changes the game a lot, but I do think Marais was on his way to a pretty like solid victory there potentially, right? Demetrius tends to get better as the fight goes yeah. on, but that need did like, that does add a lot of stuff. Do I want to see it in fights necessarily? I mean, I like it to be different. Honestly, I do like to see di promote different promotions with different rule sets. It keeps the sport interesting. Uh, but you're no, you're totally right. You're totally right. Like the UFC has always been able to say that because they just have more money behind it. Right. Like they have more eyes on it. Right. And they have more American eyes on it. And those are generally the louder voices as well. So people aren't going to necessarily believe that these other promotions have any really good talented fighters. And I think honestly, Eddie Alvarez is probably the best example though, because the way he was taken out by Nastukin in his very first fight in, in one, 
And we had never heard of this guy as most MMA fans, right? And he's, he just crushed him. He crushed him like he was any, any regular fighter. And he was just coming off like being champion in the UFC. I don't think he's necessarily washed. I don't think he's as good as he was, but he's still a very good fighter. For him to get just blasted like that and for Demetrius now, like honestly, man, this past just week has been a really good week for non-UFC MMA. It's been a good week to show that like the UFC gap – between between all these other promotions is is very very small and i would even say it's non-existent i don't think there's a gap i think uh at the top end uh outside of khabib um because khabib's in his class in a class of his own the pressure the, the, the mental side of it i don't see, i almost see everyone being interchangeable you like man can you imagine gay guard Masasi versus israel adesanya adesanya that's a hell of a fight and you know what? With Gegard's experiencing, they both come from the same background of kickboxing and Muay Thai, right? But gegard has been in there with killers. So is Izzy. Don't get me wrong. So is Izzy. But Gegard's experience across the two divi- or across the two uh, promotions, that's a pick them. Now we go Jan Blokovic or um, Nemkov. Nemkov is a monster, all right? He can match... He- I would say he can match Blockwitz or maybe a, t- a shade less than the power department, right? Size-wise, they're about the same size. However, Nemkov is a whole hell of a lot faster. He's way more explosive, you know? So- he's a harder. I'd argue he's a harder hitter. I mean, like, everybody talks about the, the Polish power. It's not that Blockwitz doesn't hit hard. He does. But, like, I don't think he's, like, that far and away from other guys in, in, in the light heavyweight division. I think Nemkov definitely is, is definitely a threat to any light heavyweight in the world, for sure. But sure. Peggy, we'll end it there, my man. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this recap. Guys, let us know if there's something particular that you want in the comments below. Do you, If you want us to do a full-blown recap of the week, just kind of one episode a week like that, or if you want us to do individual breakdowns of, you know, the the, the week of MMA. So we could do one, one, one card. We could do another Bellator card, a UFC card, something like that. Obviously, with time with time constraints and stuff like that, we have to be careful. But you guys let us know. Whatever you want, we will do our best to bring it to you. Until the next one, peace out. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.